All right, so uh, we're on module two. So uh, earlier this morning, you had the intro to cloud computing. You had the introduction to RNA sequencing. You did the, uh, the tutorial. Uh, now we're going to focus on uh, the uh, alignments, uh, RNA-seq alignments. Uh, what aligner we're going to be using, uh, uh, what files we'll be generating, and how we can visualize uh, alignment uh, uh, files. So. Um, Objectives for, for, for this section would be uh, to go over some of the challenges that we face uh, when it comes to RNA-seq alignments, uh, some alignment strategies, uh, the uh, tool of choice, um, as it was mentioned before, so we'll be using Bowtie and Top Hat for uh, this workshop. Um, then I'll introduce you to the BAM uh, format, SAM format, and BED format, if you're not familiar with those. Uh, and then some basic manipulations of BAM uh, files, alignment files and then um, some visualization. And then the second section of this uh, talk is gonna focus on alignment QC. So uh, what kind of QC metrics uh, you uh, could use to assess the quality of your library uh, that you're about to sequence. Um, and also a bit on uh, read, uh, BAM read counting if you're trying to call variants uh, from RNA-seq. Uh, so, some of the um, uh, challenges that we face with uh, RNA-seq is the, uh, the, the the first the first challenge is the computational co cost. Uh, we're dealing with hundreds of millions of reads. So as uh, sequencing is getting cheaper, we're getting uh, more and more reads that we uh, we have to uh, process. Um, uh, the, the other challenge is the fact that uh, unlike the uh, DNA-seq, RNA-seq, uh, uh, we have to deal with uh, introns. So uh, when, we, w when we construct libraries, uh, we construct the libraries from MR, uh, uh, mRNA. So uh, uh, these uh, are exons or coding regions. Uh, but when we try to align them against a reference, we have a whole genome reference, uh, which includes both introns and exons. So that's another challenge that the aligners uh, face when they try to map exons to uh, whole genome reference. Um, and the fact that uh, RNA-seq data is so rich, it, it contains so much information about, uh, you can get information about uh, not only expression, but you can get information about splice uh, variants. You can get actually, uh, you can call SNVs from RNA-seq. You can uh, look at fusions. Uh, and each one of these uh, different data types have its own set of uh, pipelines and, and, and uh, ways that you can process uh, that, that data. So when it comes to mapping strategies, there are three different categories of uh, mapping uh, strategies. So there is the de novo assembly. Um, you can also align to uh, a, no, a, a transcriptome if you have a, a, a gene model that you, you're familiar with or and you know. Um, or you can use the uh, uh, whole genome uh, uh, re reference uh, and uh, infer possible transcripts uh, abundance from, uh, from that. Um, so how do you decide which strategy you should pick uh, when you're uh, trying to choose an aligner? For de novo assembly, you would pick that if you, are, uh, if you're, if you don't have uh, a reference, a known reference genome, uh, you would go uh, with that. Or if you have a very complex uh, polymorphism or mutation haplotype, uh, that might be missed if you uh, compare it to just a, a regular reference genome. Um, you can also align to transcriptome, as I said, uh, if you have short reads. Uh, but uh, what we are going to be doing today is that we're aligning to a reference uh, genome. And that's what uh, most people do with, uh, uh, the, with, with the uh, aligners, uh, uh, such as Top Hat and, and, and Bowtie. Um, and as, as mentioned here, each strategy involves different aligners and assembly tools uh, that come with it uh, as, a, as a package. So this uh, diagram here shows uh, a list of the different aligners that uh, uh, have been uh, published uh, since 2001, and, and you can see there are a lot of uh, aligners. The uh, aligners that are for RNA are highlighted in red. Um, I just want to highlight a couple of aligners. So the first one I want to highlight is Top Hat. Uh, it, it has been um, used for a very long time. There are a lot of publications that uh, have been using Top Hat. It has a very good uh, uh, documentation uh, and support. And uh, most of the time, a lot of the questions that you have uh, regarding how to run Top Hat, you'll probably find answers uh, for them online if you just uh, do a simple search in Google. 
Uh, another uh, tool, another aligner that uh, has been uh, also uh, used lately is STAR. Uh, it's known to be extremely fast. Uh, when we, if you want to uh, align a human uh, paradigm library, uh, one lane, usually in Top Hat, it would take about a day. Uh, with STAR, uh, uh, it takes a few hours. So it's a lot, a lot faster than uh, Top Hat. So in the workshop today, we will have uh, commands. Uh, you've installed uh, uh, STAR in the uh, first uh, module. We will uh, focus on Top Hat, but we'll also uh, run STAR if we have time. So all the commands for the STAR alignments uh, are going to be there. So we'll be doing the alignments with STAR, and then we'll also do the expression and then differential expression using uh, that alignment uh, from uh, STAR and uh, Top Hat. Um, so should I use splice aware or unspliced uh, mapper? Again, as I mentioned, uh, the, the libraries uh, that you've prepared, they are mRNA uh, libraries, and they, they, uh, they only uh, code for, uh, for exons. Uh, and the, uh, uh, the whole genome contains both introns and, and, uh, uh, and uh, exons. So if you're doing, um, if, you're, uh, if you're aligning against the whole genome, then you have to pick an aligner that is uh, aware of uh, uh, splice junctions. Uh, uh, otherwise, if you don't want that, then you should align it to uh, a reference that contains, consists of only the transcriptome. Uh, uh. Um, so how does bow tie work? So uh, bow tie and top high. So bow tie is the, uh, the back end aligner that uh, top, top hat utilizes or uses. Uh, so what it does, it, uh, this top hat is splice aware uh, and uh, requires a, a reference uh, genome, so a, a whole genome. And what it does essentially is that it takes the reads and then it breaks them into little, small chunks. And then it uses that information, it maps those reads to the whole genome and uses that information to uh, come up with splice dictionary. Um, and I'll go into the details of, uh, or, or go through an example to show you how that works. So let's take this as an example. So we have two reads, read X and read Y. Uh, and this is the uh, reference genome, uh, two exons, exon 1, exon 2, and then the intronic region in between. And let's say that uh, the first read, read X, spans two exons, while read Y only spans one exon. Uh, and you're trying, to, uh, you're trying to align that. So what Bowtie does, uh, it it looks at each read, and the first pass, it tries to align the read against the reference genome. So in this case, it's not going to have any difficulty with read Y because it spans one exon, and it will map perfectly to the first exon. However, then it goes to read X, and it tries to align that. Um, it will have an issue because half of the read actually belongs to exon 2, and the other half belongs to exon 1, but the reference has an intronic region, so it will not be able to map it. So what it, what it does, it, it uh, throws it into an unaligned bin. And then it takes all the reads that uh, are in the unaligned bin and it breaks them into uh, smaller chunks. And then it takes each one of these chunks and it goes back and it aligns to the whole genome uh, reference. So after uh, breaking the read, now the first chunk is going to align to exon 1. The third chunk is going to align to exon 2. But the one in the middle is still uh, going to have some issues uh, aligning. But what it does is that it collects information, the mapping information, uh, from the uh, X1, X2, and X3. And then it tries to come up with a splice <coughs> library um, of potential splice sites, or where, where are the splice junctions. And then once it comes up with that library, it's going to go through the alignments again based on the splice junction library that it came up with. Uh, and it will realign all the reads around those sites that it detected to see if, uh, if those uh, uh, are, are true or not. And then it will annotate each read according to the splice junctions uh, that it detected. Um, so when you're doing alignment, uh, another question that, uh, uh, that you, will, you will face is whether or not uh, you should use, use uh, multi-mapped uh, reads. So when we're dealing with uh, uh, DNA-seq, uh, uh, most of the time what we do is we pick, sometimes a read can map to multiple places, and it maps multiple places uh, with very high quality. Um, so with DNA-seq what we do is you pick the, uh, you randomly pick one of the top alignments if they all have the same uh, exact quality score, if they're all uh, 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 have this, the same high score. Um, but with RNA-seq, um, 
you don't want to do that, because so you, you don't want to affect the dynamic range of your expression. So if you're assessing expression, uh, let all the reads that multi-map, uh, uh, keep them in there. If you're trying to call variants from RNA-seq, uh, then you can do the, that method that you do with DNA-seq and only pick one of the reads that multi-map. Um, so what's the output? So you run, you run your uh, fast, uh, fast Q file through the aligner, through the uh, splice uh, junction uh, uh, detector and the assembly. Uh, the output will be a BAM file. Um, so uh, a SAM or a, or a BAM file. The SAM file stands for Sequence Alignment uh, Map Format. And a BAM file is just the uh, compressed binary version of that uh, uh, file. Now, a SAM file is simply a text file, so you can just open it up and then you'll, you, you'll be able to read the content of that file. With a BAM, you cannot do that. You will need uh, another, uh, you will need to convert it to a SAM or uh, use uh, uh, other tools that will help you open up the, the, the file and view the content. You're saving a lot of space by converting from SAM to BAM. Uh, so most of the time, if, you, if you're running out of space, it's, it's best to convert your files to a BAM file and just keep the BAM, because uh, you can always go back to, to the SAM and, and uncompress. Um, and a lot of the tools uh, that, that are downstream, they take both SAM and BAM uh, uh, formats. Um, how can you convert BAM to SAM? So throughout this, uh, this talk, you'll see links to Biostar's uh, uh, blog. Uh, one tool that I uh, usually use is SAM tools. So you can use SAM tools to convert a SAM file to uh, uh, a BAM file. And that, that tool is, uh, does not only convert, but it does a lot more than just uh, conversion. And we'll see some examples throughout the, uh, the talk today and tomorrow. So what does... Uh, a SAM or a BAM file look like. So here we're looking at um, an example uh, of, a, of a SAM file. Um, I just want you to uh, know that there are two, two components to that file. So there is a header and there is a, a body. And I'm going to go through each uh, section and then in detail show you uh, what each uh, section includes. Um, so as I said, the SAM format consists of two sections. There's the header, there's the alignment section. Uh, and I also mentioned that the BAM is a compressed version of the uh, SAM. Also, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, BAM's file, uh, they're usually indexed. Uh, so uh, uh, especially when you we're going to try and view these files in IGV, we'll have to index uh, the file. So what that means is that you generate another uh, file, smaller uh, version, that is uh, the, the index of the BAM file. Uh, and it, the extension is... Uh, BAI, and what it does, it uh, helps you retrieve alignments a lot faster uh, uh, with, with that index. You won't be able to view the BAM file in IGV unless you have the index file uh, uh, associated with it. Now, this is a breakdown of the uh, header section. So this is the information that the header section of the BAM file. Um, uh, so you start with the, uh, the, uh, the header line, which contains uh, the, the format version, and the sorting order of the uh, alignments, whether you've sorted by coordinates or you've sorted by uh, the reads. Then you get information about the uh, sequence that you've used in your alignment. Uh, so the, the, the reference name, the reference sequence length, uh, and uh, also the, the species. Uh, read group uh, is the third section. Uh, you have a read group identifier and the uh, name of the sequencing center and a uh, sample name. So these, all of these things are things that you can uh, uh, modify yourself uh, and, and, and add. And it's best to, if you annotate it properly and add the proper uh, sample name, uh, uh, the, the tool, the name of the tool that you use, the version that you use, so that when you open a BAM file, you know what was used to process this BAM file instead of uh, adding big information that and then you won't know what was used uh, exactly to, uh, to, to generate this, this file. Um, and then again, so you can, you can add the program name and program version. If this wasn't done properly at the beginning, there are tools where you can go back and modify this information, the header, uh, to uh, annotate it uh, properly. Uh, so that was the header section of the BAM. Now if you move to the, the body of the BAM, you will find uh, a list of the uh, file information. So uh, I've highlighted two, which I will uh, talk about uh, in depth uh, after this slide. But you'll find information uh, for each. So you'll, each line will consist of a, a read or uh, an alignment uh, for that read. So you'll have the, uh, the, the, the template name. You'll have a, a flag. 
which uh, describes uh, the read, and I'll, I'll get into that in a bit. Uh, you have the, uh, the uh, reference uh, name, uh, which means the, the chromosome that it aligned, that read aligned to, the position, uh, the mapping quality. So there are two qualities that you'll get. You'll get a mapping quality for the whole read, uh, and at the end you'll get also a, a, a sequence, so a quality for each base uh, in, your, in your read. Uh, you'll get a cigar string, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit as well. Uh, and you'll also get information about, if, if you have paired end reads, it will tell you uh, where the, uh, not only where your read align, but if, if it has a proper pair, and where that pair uh, aligned as well. What chromosome and what, uh, what's the position, or how far is the second read is from your first read. Uh, so for example, if you have a fusion, uh, you realize that the second pair would be on a, on a separate, on a different chromosome. So that's one way you can actually uh, pull a fusion out, out from a, a BAM file. Uh, and yeah, as I said, so you get you get the sequence itself. So this is an example. Uh, so you'll get the sequence itself, uh, and underneath it you'll get a quality per base um, uh, for for uh, for that for that sequence. So you get quality per base, and then you get uh, an overall qual alignment quality for that read. Um, so what are so the two things that I highlighted were the uh, flags and the the cigar string. So what are the uh, flags? So um, the flag that you see in the BAM file is just an eleven uh, bitwise flag. It, it describes the alignment. So think of it as um, instead of having eleven separate columns uh, to to uh, describe uh, the alignment, you can combine those eleven columns into one one uh, 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 metric. And, and, and that usually, that number is uh, between uh, 0 to uh, 2047. Um, and if you, ch I'm going to ask you to go to this website right now, if you can ch check out this website. Um, so this is a breakdown of the uh, possible combinations of descriptions uh, that will describe the, the, the read. Um, and this number is important because we use it to subset BAM files. So if you're interested in um, a subset of the of the BAM or a subset of alignments uh, that, uh, let's see, that don't map. So I'm only interested in things that don't map. So we can, um, through that uh, web, page that I, I'm just asking you to, to go, if you check that box, the unmap box, it will give you a code or a number. And you can use that number to filter uh, the, the, the BAM file using SAM tools. So I mentioned SAM tools, you can use it to convert uh, SAM to BAM. You can also use it to subset the BAM file. So if you, um, in SAM tools view, there is a, an option called dash F. And depending whether it's capital dash F or small dash F, uh, you can only subset things that uh, did not align or exclude things that did not align. That's the difference between the small F and the capital F. And you can actually use uh, combinations. So if you check two things, so if you want uh, things, that, um, things that are properly aligned and uh, they are the first segment in the template, so the first screen. So you can check this and this, and you'll get a number. And you can take that number and then use it in SAM tools, uh, SAM tools view to subset. So you, you, you generate a new BAM file that includes things that properly aligned, and you're only looking at the first reads, um, and so on. Any questions regarding uh, the flags? Um, the other thing in the, that you'll find in the body is the cigar strength. So each read will get uh, something called the cigar, uh, the cigar strength. And the cigar strength uh, is a breakdown of the uh, alignment summary per read. Um, so if you take uh, this, for example, start with the example. Uh, this is an example of a cigar strength. So you'll have 81M, 859N, 19M. So what this is telling you that out of your read, the first 81 bases were a match. And then the second 850, and then there was a gap of 859 bases in the reference, and then there was a 19 base match in the read. 
So when you see this gap in RNA-seq, it usually means intron. So there is an intronic region. Uh, so this is an exon, exon, and then there is a gap that represents an intronic region. So for, uh, for each base, you will get information about whether or not the base matched uh, and whether or not there was an insertion, a deletion, uh, or there was just a gap um, in the alignment. Um, another way you can subset uh, 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 BAM files is, so I said you can subset them ac according to the quality of the, uh, the, the, the reads or description of the reads. But you can also, if you're interested in, for example, a list of genes that you wanted to pull out or a list of positions that you wanted to pull out from your BAM file. Um, another format that is uh, used very often is the BET format. So the BET format is a text file that has uh, four columns, chromosome, start, end, and annotation. So in this case, it could be gene name, it could be whatever uh, target that you want. If you're doing targeted sequencing uh, or you're doing exome capturing, each one of these technologies, they will come with a BET file that uh, lists all these uh, different targets. And um, so you can, you can subset a BAM file uh, using that BET file that you have. Uh, and a lot of tools and QC tools, they accept uh, uh, bed files if you're only interested in those bed regions, if you want to generate uh, QC for just uh, those regions. So a bed file is very easy to generate, um, four columns, um, and they're, they're top, top separated. Um, so this is a list of tools that you can use to manipulate uh, uh, SAM, BAM, and uh, bed files. Uh, the ones that are used uh, quite often, uh, SAM tools, uh, uh, Picard, uh, and and bed tools uh, for for modifying a bed file. Uh, so, for example, if you're interested in looking at coverage uh, for a certain alignment using uh, a bed file, a specified bed file, you can use uh, bed tools uh, to to do that. Um, so after you generate the, the BAM file, you, you, you'll probably need to sort it if the, uh, the package or the tool that you use doesn't sort it uh, itself. And there are two ways that you can do the sorting. You can sort the reads uh, by position or by read name. Um, so you sort them by position. Um, it just makes the uh, uh, accessing reads within the BAM file a lot faster for tools that want to access reads within BAM file. Um, however, if you want to sort them by read name, uh, uh, the reason why you do that is you want to maintain the, uh, the uh, um, read one, read two association. Because if you sort by position, you might miss uh, uh, on the, uh, uh, the, the order of read one and read two. And for some tools, you want to keep that order, you want to maintain that order. So you sort by read name and this uh, makes sure that the, uh, the order is uh, maintained. Um, so uh, you can view the alignment in a tool called IGV, and uh, as I said, you will need to index that BAM file because IGV will require the alignment file along with the uh, index. Um, and this is just a, a snapshot of what IGV looks like. So when you open up the BAM file, you will see um, at the bottom will see a G track. You will see uh, also uh, the, the the genomic position right here, and then uh, you'll see piles of uh, 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 reads. So the, the blocks here represents uh, coverage, so where uh, areas where there, was, uh, there were reads uh, that covered that part of the genome, and then the, the blue, uh, light blue dashes represents the uh, intronic or predicted intronic regions uh, from the tool uh, that you used. Uh, and then so what you do is you try to uh, look at uh, those predictions and your uh, annotated uh, um, uh, gene track to see if it matches. Uh, if you're getting the same uh, splicing uh, uh, junctions as it was predicted in uh, a known track like QCSC or whatever track you can load. So you can, you can load as many tracks as you want um, and you can actually load multiple uh, BAM files at the same, uh, the same time. It gets too crowded uh, sometimes um, so the maximum of Two, two BAMs uh, is uh, enough. Now, um, 
also the uh, you can color the reads to uh, reflect the quality of the of the read. Uh, you can also color it to uh, uh, reflect the uh, strand that it's uh, that the read is coming from, um, and, and so on. So there are so many different parameters. We'll get the chance to actually view the BAM files that we generate uh, today uh, through IAGB. How many people? Just uh, curious. How many people have used IGV before? Okay. Everybody they did their tutorial. Oh yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so this is just a list of uh, alternative viewers to uh, IGV. Um, you can check BioStars as well. There's probably a list there. All right, so now uh, moving on to the second uh, uh, segment, which is uh, alignment QC assessment. Um, so here we're going to cover some, uh, some simple uh, metrics that we look at uh, when we assess the quality. Uh, such as uh, three prime and five prime bias, uh, nucleotide content, base and read quality, PCR artifact, uh, sequencing depth, base distribution, and insert size distribution. So so far, um, uh, when we, we talked about quality, we used FASTQC. Uh, we were looking at the quality of the sequence prior to alignment. So we didn't really look at uh, uh, anything post alignment so far. You can use FASTQC on a BAM file. So if you pass it a BAM file, it will still run. Uh, but again, it will not provide you with information about the alignment or how well the reads align. It will tell you that uh, the, 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 the reads have uh, a certain quality, but these are sequ sequence quality, not mapping quality. Um, so these things uh, uh, are, are in interesting and they're really important to look at uh, uh, post alignment to assess uh, whether or not your uh, library actually uh, construction worked. Uh, so the first, the first QC is the three prime and five prime bias, and uh, in in these slides, I'm I will be referring to a, a tool called RCC. There are many tools out there that you can use to uh, generate uh, QC reports. You can even come up with your own. So um, if you don't want to use this tool, uh, that's fine. Uh, but I'm giving you a frame uh, that you can work with. So if you look at the plot. It's something that you can generate your own if you don't want to use this tool, if, you, if it's not available. So for example, in this plot, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at, um, in the x-axis, I'm looking at the gene body percentile, so the position, uh, normalized position uh, for the transcripts. Um, so what that means is that uh, if transcripts have different lengths, we, uh, it, uh, the, the, the length gets binned, uh, so that you, you bend the length of transcript to uh, 100, 100 bins, uh, so that you, you standardize uh, the, 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 the length. And then you look at uh, each one of, uh, of, of these uh, bins, and you look at the coverage for each one of these bins. So what you expect to see is you want to see uh, sort of uniform coverage uh, across the transcript. You want to see uh, a, a similar depth across uh, the transcript, and you want it to be balanced across. So here um, you ha you'll see, you see two groups. Um, the, the first group where uh, the coverage is balanced, but you also see another group where there is so much um, coverage at the uh, three prime end. Uh, and and you, you need to um, be careful when you're analyzing these things because uh, if you have bias in your coverage, it will highly influence your expression estimation because short reads will have uh, overestimated expression, and very long reads will have underestimated expression. Um, so if you detect such a thing at the alignment level, you, you need to either go back and figure out why that happened. Uh, most of the time, it's probably the kit that you use to construct the library. There is a, a, a problem uh, with it, or maybe your uh, uh, RNA is uh, degraded. Um, <coughs> So, and if you can't do anything about it, then you will need to look for computational tools that will uh, uh, assess and fix such biases when they're assessing expression. Um, um, another uh, plot that you can uh, you can do the nucleotide content. So here uh, on the x-axis, you can uh, plot the uh, position uh, uh, of the read. Uh, so this is a short read. There are only 35 bases. 
uh, and then you look at the uh, percentage of ACGT uh, within uh, each position in your read. And what you expect, you expect it to be random, right? So it should be about 25% each. Um, however, with uh, Illumina uh, sequencing, I, I'm not sure if some of you have generated such a plot uh, before, you'll notice that the first 10 bases, uh, they are not very uh, um, uh, random. I mean, you, you see um, imbalance in the uh, percentage of ACGT. And um, Illumina has recognized that, and it's due to uh, uh, the, the random primers that they use when they uh, reverse transcribe RNA into uh, uh, cDNA. Uh, and it turns out that those uh, the the, uh, uh, the the enzymes they are not they 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 they're not very random and they 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 um, they, they introduce um, some patterns in the first uh, few bases of uh, the, the the read. So you have to be careful about that because those actually affect the uh, mapping mappability of your uh, data. So one thing you can do is you can trim the first few bases uh, to eliminate that bias from your read. Yes? Um, in the factorial system, how do we interpret this graph where there is a GC con high content in some of the strains? So in that case, uh, the GC percentage will be very, very high in comparison to our and all. So how do we say, uh, is it GC content in the factorial or it is the bad um, I guess with the GC content, you look at the overall distribution, and it's not positional uh, uh, effect. So it's not, it doesn't happen at the beginning of the read or at the end of the read or in the middle. So you look at the distribution of the GC content and see if that overall distribution is what you expect, uh, expect it to be. This ha only happens at the beginning of the read. So it's, uh, it's position specific. So unlike uh, uh, GC, I guess. So uh, no, GC is not uh, uh, read, it's position dependent. So again, before you trim, make sure you generate such plot, make sure that you have uh, such bias, and if you do, then try to uh, take, care, take care of it. Um, quality distribution. Uh, as I said, there are two types of, two types of uh, quality. There is the base quality and there is the mapping quality. So here we're looking at the uh, position uh, of the read. So uh, for each uh, uh, base uh, across the, the read, what's the, uh, uh, the quality? And you will encounter this term a lot, the FRED uh, quality. So what is uh, the FRED uh, quality score? It's simply the uh, negative log negative 10 times log 10 of p, where p is the probability that the base calling is wrong. So when you see a FRED score of 30, that means that there is one in a thousand chance that the base calling is wrong. And uh, usually uh, uh, 30 is a good uh, uh, a number to, to use when you're uh, trying to pick good quality reads, so you pick things that are higher than 30. But again, the higher, the, the, the better, the, the more accurate the, uh, the calls are. Um, PCR duplication. Um, so a duplicate reads uh, are reads that have the same start and end position. And um, they are usually a result of a PCR uh, artifact. So uh, Malachi, I think, talked about uh, 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 PCR duplication and, and how uh, 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 people don't tend to collapse uh, reads because it affects the, the dynamic range of, of your data. Um, but if you want to uh, visualize PCR uh, artifact or possible PCR artifact in your data, one thing you can do is uh, the, the tool, the same tool I, I talked about, uh, looks at the, uh, the number of uh, 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 duplicates and the number of reads that have that duplication uh, number and what that percentage is, how many, like what, what's the uh, percentage of reads that, that have such a thing. And ideally what you want is you want uh, to have a small number of reads that have a very high uh, duplication number and you don't want uh, a curve that goes that way. Now, uh, what would you do if you see a high duplication? I'll leave, I guess I'll leave that up to you uh, because, again, 
collapsing might affect the uh, dynamic uh, range of your expression uh, data. So you might want to uh, check the, the library construction and the PCR cycles uh, to try and adjust, adjust for that. Um, the other question that get asked uh, that I, I, I used to get asked when I was in production is uh, how deep or how much how many lanes do we need how many lanes of sequencing uh, uh, do we need um, so one way you can uh, think of that when, when when you talk about DNA seq it's a lot easier because you have a, a threshold you say okay I'm gonna sequence uh, 50x or 100x an average of 100x. However, it's harder with RNA because of the expression. So the expression for genes uh, will be different. So you can't really set uh, a threshold in terms of, of coverage. But one approach that uh, this tool has taken is uh, resampling technique. So what they do is they take the BAM file, the full BAM file, and then they start taking samples from that BAM file. So they would take 10%, uh, 20%, 30% of the reads, and so on up to 100%. And for each sample, they would go and look at the uh, splice junctions, the number of splice junctions that they can detect from that sample and compare it to known uh, uh, splice junctions. And what they're looking for is they're looking for saturation effects. At what point do we saturate? We have enough data and we can't really discover any more splice junctions. Uh, and it's that, it's that point where uh, you, you probably have enough reads and you don't really need any more. So if you run that on just one sample, try to figure out how much data you need based on this plot. You can go back and then apply that, uh, that number on the rest of the samples uh, in, your, in your data set. Yeah. What do you do if your genome doesn't have a lot of splicing? Uh, yeah, so that then, then I guess what you can do, you can take the same approach and look maybe at the number of genes, new genes that you discover, or new genes that appear in, in your expression. That could be a, a different way of looking at it. If you don't have splice, and you notice that there are three three lines. So one line looks at the novel junction, the other uh, looks at the known junctions, and uh, the purple is all all junctions. And you notice that the uh, known junctions they saturate a lot faster than the uh, novel junction, and that could be because um, the 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 splice junction detection tool produces a lot of false positives. So. Uh, a lot of these could be could be false uh, false positives uh, that uh, might saturate, might not saturate, uh, depending on the tool that you uh, you're using. Uh, so it, it's good to look at both the known and also the, the, the novel when uh, deciding how much uh, you need. Um, another important thing to look at is the uh, the, the base distribution. Uh, so how many uh, how many bases uh, align to uh, uh, a coding uh, a non non a non coding region, and depending on the library you use, so or the the, the library construction, whether it's uh, poly A or whole transcriptome, the distribution will be different. Uh, so with the poly A, you'll get more coding. With whole transcript transcriptome, you'll get less coding. Um, so it's important to look at that distribution after, and if you're not getting the desired proportions, that you should go back and, and, and again check why why is that, uh, and reassess uh, library uh, techniques. Um, before I talk about insert size uh, distribution plots, I wanted to highlight few terms um, that tend to be used interchangeably um, in the community. Uh, but I just wanted to clar clarify, clarify them. So here we're looking at uh, a, fr a DNA fragment that uh, we are interested in sequencing. Uh, so this, the second line, you were looking at the fragment plus the adapters uh, uh, attached at both ends. Uh, when you're doing a single end, we are sequencing one end of the fragment. When you're doing paired end, we're sequencing uh, both ends of that fragment. And um, uh, depending on the on the length of that fragment uh, uh, and the length of your reads, you'll you'll get a gap in between um, uh, the, the the two reads. Um, so these are the three terms that uh, I wanted to highlight. When you talk about fragment, we're talking about the uh, the, the, the 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 this part that you want to sequence plus the adapters. Insert is just the part that you want to sequence without the adapters. 
and then the inner mate is the distance from the end of read 1 to the beginning of read 2. And that's what I'm plotting right here. So I'm plotting the insert size, so the distance between the, uh, the gap uh, between the two reads. And um, you, you see that uh, there, there is a distribution, because when you do, when you do a size selection, uh, it's, it's, it's a distribution. So you'll get, uh, you'll get some reads that are uh, uh, longer than, uh, uh, than others here. Uh, it's showing a bimodal distribution, so it seems that there are two fragments, maybe, that were selected. Um, uh, usually, you see a normal, a normal distribution, and that reflects uh, the, that there is one fragment that was, uh, that was selected. But you notice that there, uh, the, here I'm like plotting the distance between the reads. So sometimes you'll have a zero distance between the reads, and that's when uh, there is no there is no gap. So the the total sum of the read length equals to the sum of the fragment. But once you your fragment gets shorter and shorter, and your read length is fixed, you'll actually have some overlap, and that's when that's why you're getting negative distance. Uh, is that when your the, the fragment size is shorter than uh, the sum of your uh, two reads, so you'll get negative distance uh, be between them. So that negative distance it might it will not affect your expression. Uh, however, you, what you want ideally you want to keep that distance. You want it, you want it to be zero or or higher. Uh, in case, for example, you're looking at um, you're calling variants, uh, you don't want one variant to be called from two E's because these two E's are dependent. They're not independent. They're coming from the same fragments. Uh, so ideally, you want to uh, pick a fragment size with that uh, increases the, uh, maximizes the insert size more than zero. Um, in terms of uh, a variant calling from, uh, uh, from RNA-seq data, you can, you can do that. So you can, uh, you can do it uh, various ways. Uh, here, we're doing it the, uh, the IGV way. So you can look in IGV, and if you see a base that is different from your reference, um, you, will, you will see that uh, alternate base highlighted. So here, for example, the reference uh, base is a G, while some reads have a T. Um, and that highlights the, uh, 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 a, var a variance in your RNA-seq data. Uh, so that's one way you can look at that. So this only works if you actually know where the, the positions are to so go and view them. Uh, you can also do um, pile-up if you want, where you give it a reference. And then for every single position, it will go and check what the base is in your sequencing data versus what it is in the reference. And if there are any uh, differences, then it will report those differences. And you can take those and then filter them or uh, view them in IGV. But there are also tools that call variants from RNA-seq data. I believe GATK now, uh, which is known for calling variants from the DNA, uh, DNA-seq uh, can actually call RNA, uh, uh, can call variants from RNA-seq. Uh, I haven't personally used it, but um, uh, it can be done. You can also look at the, uh, if you already have SNVs or variants from DNA, you can take that and then look at those positions in the RNA to see if there is uh, any concordance between RNA and DNA uh, variants. And this leads us to the tutorial for uh, module two, where we will be um, we'll take all the fast uh, the fast key files that you obtained from the previous module. And we will run uh, top hat, bow tie top hat, uh, uh, the aligner, to get BAM files, uh, alignment files. And we'll also, uh, I believe if we have time, we'll try to run uh, FastQC and r 6 So if we have a module that's optional. We'll see if we have time. Uh, we can run FastQC and generate the plots that you've seen. Uh, um, uh, all the commands are there as well if you want to take the commands and then run them. Uh, in your lab, uh, you're more than welcome.